slow on this video we're gonna be doing the vector but I'm also going to uh, set up the, the whole puppet Yeah, I don't like going to those anymore. I used to. No, food in Houston is... Um, it's hard to describe it's because it's... It's... Um, yeah, because Mexico's right there. We have a lot of steaks and shrimp. Steaks and Cajun food. Um, steak and a lot there in our Texas I don't know it kind of blurred everything you know my favorite place was Papa Do's. it's a uh, Caden type thing but that place used to be packed packed uh, I was on Westheimer I think it was on Westheimer No, we, we go to Sharptown Mall, Galleria, back, back then. Uh, yeah, but well, back then it was kind of considered to be... Yeah, like they had a lot of good malls and then most of the time when we went anywhere it was the Galleria. Oh yeah, I think they might have been speaking generally. Yeah, because you couldn't tell. Nah, it was a melting pot of all kinds of things. I'm gonna when so Houston has a lot of immigrant families. I'm talking about Indian and, and Asian families that were coming uh, there. Uh, so at the time, it was a blending of like Asian cars and Hondas. And I don't know who was doing it for Hondas first. I, I don't think it was California. I want to say it was Houston. Because I remember the first time they saw that shop, it was the exhaust and different things like that they were selling. But we have a lot of immigrants. It's a, a, just a mixture of a lot of people. And. What? No. No, well, it's yeah. You talking Harris County probably would be one. Mm, like my teen, I went, went there for college. It's kind of it, it was back then like a college town, I, I guess you would say, because it was like a lot of schools are close, and the cost of living where we were was really cheap. Not like super cheap, but. No. Yeah, yeah, like it's, I was bartending back then. It's called Bennigan's. Yeah, well, it was, it was called, uh, I think it was called chocolate something, I can't remember. But yeah, I know, I think I know what you're talking about. It's on the north side. 
Yeah, there's north south. And that's where usually all the you know, unless you're going to San Antonio, which is you know, good too, but a lot of memories at that in Houston. <laughs> I told you I was bartending and going to school. <laughs> yes. No, because they close at one, uh, two in the morning. Bennigan's close at two in the morning. <laughs> yes. Uh, my ship, it was great because it was. I, I want to say it was because you either came in at six, so if they like you, you can come in at seven. You know, be like a, um, you know kind of like a new bartender waiting for the main bartender to get there so I want to say it was 7 the closing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday no I had like regulars you call them regulars because they were always there but there was a car dealership a guy that used to tip well even back then what else? There was a lot of car sales people that would come there. Um, yeah, no. Sometimes they had a cop there because across the street there was like a a club that when it let out, people would just rush over to uh, uh, Bennigan's because we closed at 2 o'clock in the morning. There's other places that were kind of you know oh yeah I forgot she was from there what yes yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay yeah, I, it's hard to explain if you've never been there what yes it's crazy you again you have a lot of different people from different places mm, sometimes no most of the bartenders knew each other there was more than one store actually and, and there was one on the north I can't remember I forgot about that the two major ones back then was Red Lobster, Bennigan's, there was two of them. Um, but yeah, bartenders hook up bartenders. I, rem I usually tip them $20. So it would be always this, a, a large number, I'll just say that. So when the waiters and everybody would get out at 2 in the morning, we would go to other places that uh, were uh, open. I think they shut down when, um, can't remember when, but I remember them merging. Was it General Mills that was owning them? I, I can't remember. So I thought Bennigan's was in the same family as Red Lobster and uh, Olive Garden. I might be mistaken, but I, I no, I bartended at both Bennigan's was where I kind of started because I was a waiter first and then I started bartending uh, and then after that I went to uh, Red Lobster and they were I, I think affiliated with mm, so, yeah sometimes but yeah I bartended at the Red Lobster uh, the bartended at the Olive Garden uh, and the Bennigan's of course there was one more place but I, I, it was on either Westheimer or well no because uh, Westheimer, think of it as this a one-way road that goes from it goes from basically 
one area to another but it's a long road and it's parallel to uh, Richmond Road and it'll take you all the way to the city or, or downtown no I don't really think about it that much no cost of living was lower than that they, they, they'll tell you that yep, yep, yep. oh there yeah but they like you understand like Texas is a rich uh, state and then just the you know the cities alone we're talking about Dallas we're talking about you know uh, San Antonio like those are if, if you think about how big it is as <laughs> well uh, for it's kind of like its own state some of the cities are really you know maybe two of the cities together but you know it's, it would take you two hours to get to a different city two half hours to get to um, you know No, they had a basketball team. <laughs> what are you talking about? They won the championship. <laughs> no, and the Cowboys. No, because it wasn't a rivalry like that. But uh, there was fans of the Cowboys from all over the world. So, no, nah, I shouldn't say exaggerate all over the world, but you know, I would say in the states. Oh, with Barton, yeah. No, it wasn't like that. It wasn't crazy like that, but yeah, it was. How do you know? <laughs> they will come back and they will either become regulars or start talking to you. You can, all, yeah, when, when you're a bartender, you, you talk to everybody. So, yeah, hey, you know. You ask me, how do I know? Because they will come back and they will become what I call regulars. Because I had a, a a group of people that pretty much there was like the cart the guy that was the owned all the uh, it was the dealership you know twenty dollars you know thirty like he would go crazy you know yeah and then the guys that sell cars as well when they would sell a car I would know it by my tips <laughs> those guys used to make money. I can't remember the dealership. It was one that I think it was the high end one. It might have been Lexus. I don't. I can't remember for sure. But they would be very happy because they would, you know, get that one big check if they sold a car. Um, but they used to be stressed off. Uh, stressed off. That's what they were. Um, <laughs> stressed off. Should I put that down somewhere? Um. They would get drunk when they were like behind. I think there was some quarter they had to have month to month, or they would like cycle them out. Um, and and the you know the owners don't care. So some of them will come to the bar and get crazy drunk because they had worry about what? Yes, car sales back then. Well, yeah. Yeah, crazy amounts. What are you talking about? Dude, no one's going to tip me. Like. What? No, on, yeah, but those were my regulars. They would be tips of $20. Or whatever. Like, uh, uh, what was his name? It was a nickname. Or I think it was his initials, PK. When he came there, he bought like everyone there. Uh, You know. Whoever was sitting 
in the like the area of the bar. Like our area of the bar pretty much had places where you can really eat appetizers. So there's like five tables. They could come to the bar and eat and either right in front of the bar and then they had five uh, like these small tables and then the televisions were on each side. No, he would just, oh, it's, technically it's not a lot, but he would pay for, you know, everyone liked him. When he came, people <laughs> knew that he was going to like, yeah, he would buy out, the, he would not buy out the bar, but back then he would just buy, you know, 30, 40 people. Yeah, at the bar too, though. Like, I've seen him spend money like that. No, because he would get pissed off if I didn't give him, like, a discount. And that was only... So, the bartender thing is this, right? You will get regulars, and they will tip you very well. But they expect you, on the other end, to be like, Okay, well, give me a discount. Right? And what do you do in that situation? And you're thinking about that, oh, $20 here, $20 here. Uh, the holiday, uh, $50. If you're a bartender in the holidays and you have regular customers, that's a win. But the, the curse is, oh, well, or or sometimes they wouldn't even want to pay for it. Like, they would, okay, you know, yeah, I would pay. pay I, never, I was making a lot of money at that place. Um, no, just on my regulars. My regulars would usually, like all the car guys would tip $20, but they would be there all day. Yeah, because the manager loved when they came in, but there were certain things we had to have stock all the time, just specifically for that group of uh, regulars. Uh, that would be only the bad thing. Sometimes those car guys, if they're not doing good in sales, they always pull that, I'll, I'll get you next time, or whatever. And they would, so. If, and if you ever hit me with that, uh, I'll get you next time, and you did it, there was no coming back from that. And a lot of them knew that as well. No, because I can't really do anything to that end. But they're not going to be getting the kind of service they had before at all. No, they would no. They would be like, oh, he's not messing with me today. I would talk to everybody that came to the bar. The regulars would end up talking to all of those regulars. But I, I would talk to people all the time. And... Oh, what, bartender? No. The people that are paying you that money, kind of money, they wouldn't have to walk up to the bar to get the drinks. I would bring it to them, like at one of the five round tables. No, because I knew what everyone drank. And as soon as they hit the door, I would have like four or five, you know, whatever to make uh, when they came in. And I knew what they drank. No, that's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you regulars were like that. All right, so let me just put it this way. When regulars came in, I would start making their drinks right away. They wouldn't even have to ask. And I would bring them to the table. Now, if you're a regular that did that, I'll hit you next time. Uh, whatever. <laughs> YouTube trying to put this up there. Um, you... I didn't make your drink when you walked through the door. I made you come to the bar and get it. So there was a little, you know, perks to being a regular and tipping well, because I would take care of them. But, yeah, and, and... Yeah, that's what I mean. They would take the hint. Because they understand that there's an issue if I'm... I'm it's an, it's, so if you're a regular, you're coming there, and I'm not already starting to blend your drink or pour your, uh, you know, get your olive out or whatever, 
you know there's a problem because you're used to getting that service. So yeah, they would know. Mm, well, no, because I wouldn't give them bad customer service. They just wouldn't get the service that they were getting before. <laughs> the difference. And a lot of them like that treatment because if they sit at that round table and they're with a, uh, you know, or their girl or whatever, and I just automatically bring it their drinks and they don't ask me to bring their drinks they like shit like that what yeah they, they would love that especially if they had a girl that they were trying to like yeah they 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 and those were the perks that you get and if you were dry I would be checking your drinks and and if you were getting ready to uh you know get low i get you back up <laughs> that simple no they wouldn't have to ask for anything and i would also give the discount so but yeah some of those car guys when they wouldn't sell cars stuff like that they were uh not to be trusted <laughs> No, cause w yeah, but I'm I'm saying with the regulars, I, they would come in. Okay, just think about it like this, right? I am paying attention to everything you're drinking. I know how much your bill's gonna be most of the time. I know exactly what to get you, what you're like. If there's someone with you, da 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 da, right? When you give them special attention, they like the special attention in front of people, other people, right? Maybe they're selling a car, signing the papers there at the bar, or whatever. Right, they come in there with the paperwork. The person will sign it. I come over there, get their drink set up, and you know, make it look smooth. But the other thing is this: if I, as soon as you walk in the door, and I'm making your drink for you, right? You didn't ask me for it. Yeah, because I didn't ca look. I, I would say, and and I'm not no bottle girl or whatever, the bartenders that were working there, especially at night where we were, there was a theme park called Astroworld. There was a um, club that was across the street. You could technically, especially with my regulars, if five of my regulars came in, that was automatically $100. And the other things would be five and whatever. But you have to understand, the regulars are looking out for you in a way because when the regulars are happy that you're the bartender other people see that and then they start to kind of you know no not ego based like that right it they would basically treat you with more respect if uh, you had a crowd of people there that were you know they knew you by name and, and they were regulars and you know Yeah, but they would only visually see it. So if there was a new customer there or whatever, right? I I, I could feel they were like, okay, this is not a regular bartender, <laughs> right? So they, they treat you different, a little bit different. I wouldn't say all the time, but yeah. If the regulars are there, they would. horror stories there wasn't ever any horror stories one of the managers husband came in the store and he was abusive to her and we had to get call the cops uh, I think there was a plea that you figured out the the uh, combination to it, uh, the safe in the managers room and uh, stole money and they didn't know who it was No, because when you're back then, what is what you would call for a bartender or a server closing? When you're a bartender, you're closing. You have to help the manager count money. You're the second signature that goes on the the uh, the plastic bag that goes in the safe to go to the bank the next day. No, 
there was certain managers. Well, you have to say too. So you you'll have your main GM. He's only working in the morning to probably about two. Then you have your mid manager. That's the manager that pretty much does all the work. That means they're going to be making sure we're stocked with the liquor. We got everything we need as far as the food. They'll go back and be like, talk to the cooks. Hey, are we good for tonight? You know, the, today's a busy day because of X, Y, Z. The middle manager was the m more camaraderie among the bartenders, cooks, and everybody. Because that was the person, if you needed something, you they would help you. Or if you're in, in what we call the weeds, the manager, that type of manager would help you, you know, get your entrees out or... Um, Yeah, anything. The, the one is min anything. Like, it w if the cooks were behind and they start getting irritated and stuff like that, you have to go back there and cook and help the cook. Some days you, at the bar, it was not a big deal because we had five tables and then we had the you know, I think it was eight chairs that were actually in front of the bar that you could give them appetizers, but they weren't getting full meals there. If you were going to go to the bar you have basically really no yeah it's not like dinner service it's like snacks you can eat there right so and they knew that my regulars I wouldn't care if they wanted a steak while they're you know doing I would get that but usually we're not that busy so the men manager was the one that pretty much was to me was running everything Oh, the mid manager. <laughs> well, the main GM, he's there to nine. So I would say he gets out of there by two. Maybe I don't know, two or three. If he used to come in, and if it was busy, the mid manager would stay with the the, the night man. The night manager is the guppy. It's, no, it's because the GM is not working. Is not closing the shift. Closing the shift means being there at 2, 2 a.m. The night manager is the guppy. Right. And sometimes I would close. Yeah. Like, if the night manager left early, I still had to count my register. And I also had to, you know, order anything we need at the end of the night. You do inventory uh, at night. No, because we would do a uh, routine inventory, meaning that most of the time we knew what we needed to get. If we ran out, was something weird happened. Maybe, uh, you know, a party of 12 came in, something weird. But most of the time, you know, we were on, it's real easy to do when you've been doing the same thing over and over again. You know who your regular customers are. That's who you're going to cater to. That's the thing you're looking out for. You know, make sure there's some Hennessy for this person or some. What was the back then? Let me see. Yeah, but I had a different drink that I made. It was kind of like a hurricane with the punch, the orange juice, rum, um, triple sec, and then, uh, mm, well, yeah, those are the, all your light, uh, liquors, but there's up ticks on that, so, you know, there's absolute vodka instead of just store brand, what we had there, uh, vodka, so, I mean, the most expensive one would be if someone told me, hey, make a hurricane, but make it with all top tier liquors. And that's happened. Mm, back then, I, uh, I see a shot of Hennessy or Quibble. Uh, I want to say four, maybe six dollars for that. But if you're telling me to make something like a Long Island iced tea and you want me to use like top line vodka, um, I did have a drink where the Long Island iced tea, I would have 151 vodka, 
啊，煎，嗯， yeah， because it's dry. There's dry vermouth and and other. Most of the time, you're using that for、um, yeah, martini. Or、um, there's something called a, a. There's another one with an onion in it, but yeah, you're not using that that much. But yeah, I would probably I would see the hurricane would all like up, you know, uptick liquor. That would probably be the most expensive. Yeah, under that would probably be Cuervo, eighteen、uh, hundred. Goldslager had the flakes. Can't remember anything a little bit higher than that. There were some like top, like Jamesons. There was certain special. Yeah, cause well, no, we had beer from everywhere. We had like, yeah, red stripes. We had、uh, Japanese beers. It was a.、Uh, No, I mean when you, time, the one thing about what would happen is like time goes by when you're busy. You don't realize it. Yeah, the only time you're feeling like oh well, till two o'clock is if no one's there, which would probably be like Tuesday stuff like that. But most of the time there's people there, or I'll be talking to a, a regular. Most tip I ever had. I mean,、uh, yeah, I want to say PK because he was like. I mean, technically he would be if I thought about all the twenties and you know over and over again over the time. It would probably be him. The biggest one singly.、Uh, it was this weird church lady that came in there. I think she gave me like. I want to say two fifty something like that, but that was crazy back then. She, I think it was a mega church lady that came there one day. She wasn't really drinking; it was the other people that she was with was drinking. But yeah, that probably be the biggest one. Oh yeah, no it. I don't know what they call it now, but it was like what they call ticket swapping. Basically, means that you back then you could. So if you ring up an iced tea, on、well, two iced teas, because that's you leave. Someone's coming in. That's what it's going to be.、Uh, like two iced teas, which would be I don't know back then two two dollars, three dollars, or something. And. What they would do, or the, what the waiters would do, is they would well, no, you would just move it to a, a new ticket, which would be it would take long if you were doing it that way to make money, but that's what it would be. So it would be like that. It would be you will basically move the iced tea to the next table, and then you just keep moving the two iced teas. So technically. Well, no, because it was a POS system. No, because you would close it out. So basically, it goes like this, right? So if someone comes in there, they order two steaks,、um, medium, whatever. It's it's an entree,、uh, you know, fifteen whatever dollars, and then two iced teas,、uh, which would be like three dollars and. Fifty cent or whatever, and they did refills. That's why it was a little bit higher. So the three dollars and fifty cent, right? You have two of those. So it's one drink tea, another drink tea. You would take those two teas off that ticket, right? So 
they're going to pay for it, especially if they're paying cash, that's better for you. But they're going to pay for that, that, um, the iced teas. So whenever they've paid for it and they left, right? Say there was a tip, you know, three, five dollars, some small amount. Yeah, let me see how I can describe this to you. Okay, um, imagine a basket full has two apples in there and two pears, right? Right, so the two apples are taken, right? The person paying for both apples and both, um, what did I say, pears? All right, two apples, two pears, and one basket, right? They pay for all four of them. All right, so once they pay that and they leave, you take the two pears out and you add it to a brand new basket. And the basket that left just gave you an extra, you know, $3.50, which $7. And then you, maybe they left you a $3 tip. So that tip would end up being $10 because you're going to continue to move the iced teas. Hopefully you get couples and they're paying cash. So you basically take the two iced teas from that ticket, move it to the next ticket. And you just keep doing that over and over again. Because it's not an inventory thing. Iced tea, there is no, oh, let's measure how much iced tea we have. It's there's and you, you could do it with soft drinks like Coca Cola as well. So if you had people come in there, oh, they want two cokes, you and two steaks, right? They pay for the two cokes and the two steaks, and then a brand new table comes in, and then you move those two cokes to the next ticket and close out the other one, and you would just keep doing it. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that's called, but that's what they would be doing. Uh, most of the waiters knew how to do that and they I can't remember there was a time where people were getting caught because what they start to do is like uh, if you so if you have everyone doing that and the people are paying for uh, iced teas over and over again right yeah because it, it should be more things rung up so it, so instead of you taking those two teas and putting adding it to a, a, a another table, if you just left it there, right, that's seven dollars. So if you keep moving around for the whole day and you have like ten tables, that's correct. So that's seven times ten tables because you're using the tea and the soft drink for new tickets over and over again. But it's not like liquor when you can measure it. So soft drinks can't be measured in that way. You see what I mean? All right, let's get this into Moho. <laughs> he has something to do with YouTube. What do you? <laughs> yes. What's this one? This is basically you know, it's hard to describe. It's just basically piecing together a character and then uh, bringing it to life. I'll just say it like that. So that's what I'm doing now. How many people? Uh, no, I usually get 20 people. I, yeah. No, because I I before I wasn't doing audio on any of my uh, videos. I was just doing um. Yeah, just do, just basically doing what I always do, but recording the screen while I did it. But now I do audio for them, so they can makes it a little bit easier. Someone sent me a. Uh, can't remember the email or text or whatever but they asked me um, hard to follow along please think about 
um, using sound. <laughs> so that's what I started doing. Oh, well, I don't know if it helps. <laughs> yeah, but I don't care about that. I just want him to watch it. Yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, well, my commentary, I don't start saying anything except for, you know, thanks for watching the video, but I don't, man, yeah, I, I mean, I, as, as long as people are watching, I like that. It's really just for my self-esteem to kind of keep going. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right, they told me that before, but yeah, like, I, if, you have to understand, like, if he puts a video up and, like, 30 people watch it or, or yeah, I don't care, because before it was, like, seven people or two people or, you know what I mean, or nothing, <laughs> you see, so, it gives you a little, like, boost to, like, okay, let me just keep, you know, doing it. And again, I don't get it 100%, but I'm, I'm working on trying to figure it all out. Because when this feature comes out, I have, I'm have i going to put it on YouTube. And I think my the people are going to like it. What do you think I was doing this whole time? You know the television is not on, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, it's never that quiet. So what was I doing? You made me lose my train of thought. No, he. I think they they exited a while ago. <laughs> no, they cannot. <laughs> they can't hear you. Yeah, it's on the different thing. It's a, basically it's a screen saver, but you can record audio. Yeah, I don't know. You no, know, I want them. Yeah, I'm not doing that because they couldn't get in on the conversation. <laughs> what are you talking about? They just would be listening. Why would they? Yeah, but. Yes, you are correct, but it's not the same to me. It's different when you're just doing. I'm, I'm going to try to figure out how to get them, YouTube people, to, uh, YouTube people, the people that subscribe, uh, to come in with us. Because most of the stuff I'm doing is a, it's art, um, like tutorial stuff. Oh yeah, back then, yeah. No, it just feels weird. No, like I remember back then, it was like I don't know how to describe it. It's like every back back then was chill. It wasn't like it is now. It's a weird thing. Like people were actually happy, and and I remember the, the you know it was this vibe vibrance about. You know what I mean? Yeah, people going out to the movies every weekend. Uh, like there was always something going on. All right, people were spending money, even though the, you know, maybe both parents were working, but I can't describe it. It's like a free feeling. Like like, have you ever went out at night? like late night right and there's like maybe a little bit of breeze a cool breeze but it's quiet the stars are out whatever right and maybe you're driving to the store like I don't I don't feel that energy like it was before I just don't yeah like genuine having enough money to do whatever someone's telling me about food prices I would I, I get shocked by shit like that because I'm like, hey, why aren't these people doing something? <laughs> it's like they, they, they <laughs> yeah, it's crazy to me. 
Well, yes and no, but I don't pay attention to like I, whatever I do. Most of the time, I order it; they bring it here. Uh, you know, unless I'm yeah, if I go jogging or something like that, and then I need a special thing, I'll probably go and get that because I don't. I'm not gonna spend like whatever it is, like a fifteen dollar tip for them to just bring me a couple of whatever. But if I decide to go running. Uh, or certain drinks I use when I go running, I'm not going to be, you know, I'll just jog to the store, jog back, or drive. Alright. Uh, I think... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was supposed to be a different date. They didn't tell me about it. Uh, for me? Yeah, yeah, but I'm not, I don't, I'm not buying what you would be, well, I, well, I don't know how many people, I'm not buying stuff like everything like that. You know what I mean? So, I don't know how much would I spend. I would say roughly maybe <sighs> Yeah, but sometimes I'll order uh, uh I'll go to Publix and, you know, get steaks or whatever or like cook. Um, let me think. I don't know. I would say 140 a week. If I really want to cook a certain thing, like if I'm, all right, so I'm going to cook steak. I need to have this, you know, baked potato, get the cheese, get the chive stuff, you know what I mean? So that's probably a little bit more. And I, I, yeah, but I do that once a week. Or maybe I'll order something uh, from Publix, like a hot, th whatever. And that may be a little bit more, but I don't know. I'll, uh, let me add it up in my head. So I'm actually, yeah. I do get groceries every week though, but I get the same thing. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, about 70 a week, unless I'm going to be, you know, hey, I want ice cream, strawberries, and Cool Whip. Or right, go get it. All right, but I don't know. Maybe about that. S about 70. Yeah. Yeah, 70, I would say about 70 a week. Well, no, the milk I get is always expensive because of, uh, I try to eat organic everything. So most of the stuff, except for the, uh, like the baby spinach, uh, baby spinach, baby spinach stuff that I get from the salads and stuff. No, she was telling me how... Well, that's the thing. They could tell you anything. You don't know what what costs what. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do that. I, yeah, I, I mean, I lent her money before, but it's not a big deal to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not like... Well, no, she's the youngest. Yeah, yeah, she's like the baby sister. Um, But yeah, I don't really... Mm, I, I wouldn't say that. Uh, if I thought about it, I don't know. Yeah, but that's different. You're talking about taking advantage of somebody, and it's you know, that's different. Oh, for the food prices, there's nothing they can do. Whatever they should have been doing, as far as citizens and them, you know, 
you know, it, I, I think that game is is run its course. Like, I, they, there's nothing. So, just just for the scenario, what are you going to do about it? Say the grocery the store saying, hey, this is it. This is what we're doing. What are you going to do? You, you going to start a farm? Right, but that means you have no leverage over what they're doing. Is is the, the issue, right? Someone with no leverage, or if I, there's only this many grocery store chains in the world, where you could get your gummy bears from? You gonna make that too? <laughs> where you gonna get your favorite soda? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Well, how how low did you, okay? Let's just say that scenario happened. How low do you think they would you would get it? Do you think you're going back to uh, like normal food prices? Yeah. So yeah, that's my point. How is what I'm asking you? How low? Yeah, well, first of all, tell me percentage wise how much lower you you think. Uh, they would go to if everyone's mad at them which they probably don't care about right what yes I because I know you like uh, what is that ginger ale bold or whatever right you can't make that at your house so you, yeah you're going to keep paying for it right I'm asking you a question. What are you going to do about it? First, how? So everyone's mad. Let's just—that's uh, a given. What's next? <laughs> okay. Well, how about this? Uh, I'm a grocery store person, and these farmers are really giving me a hard time. So uh, I have to do that. What are you going to say? But you've never done it before. You've never run a grocery store, have you? Okay. So how do you how do you know when price gouging is happening if you've never done run a grocery store? You see where I'm going with this? Okay. Yeah, but you're playing a game with no leverage, is what I'm telling you. You don't have anywhere to go. <laughs> you you see? You there's well, that would take a commitment, and that would take a very long. That would be longevity, because most of the magic wands that you know people wish we had, uh, I don't know where they're at. So if I know that I'm a company, a grocery store company, and I know that you can only go to Kroger, Publix, uh, uh, Walmart, whatever, right? What? are you going to say to me to make me stop doing what I'm doing and I have the government back me up and they'll write a report that says that the farmers are bad so what are you going to do no well no I'm really asking you I wasn't, I wasn't being sarcastic I mean some of it was but I'm not being sarcastic Yeah, but that's my point. So, in between when? So, so uh, in between video games, people are going to stop and uh, make sure their corn stock as well uh, it, uh, it is good. Oh, and, and this is the other thing. Hey, uh, you don't know how to make Lay's <laughs> potato chips, do you? Yeah, and, and that that uh, ginger ale bold soda that you like, you know what's in that, and and you can make that for yourself. Okay, 
That's what I'm saying. Right. Because people need those Tostitos and that Lucky Charms. So, when you have no leverage to play against what this is starting to become, just, you're going to have to, I don't, I'm not going to say that, but you it's over with. <laughs> there, they, it, it's, for me personally, when I look at the way business is run, to me, and I'm, it's my opinion, uh, you should have been doing something a long time ago to fix this. Because now, they know that you don't care. And what I mean by that is this. You've let it go on and on and on and on and on. Oh, you were, one ma you were mad about the... Um, okay, we're... Uh, whatever slogan was out there. Oh, you get mad for a little while. Don't worry, they'll they'll be okay. Yeah, cause they don't have anywhere to go. I'm I'm, you know. Almost thinking about your, think of it as in a ch a child scenario. Oh, so, uh, yeah, he he, yeah, he's mad right now. But you know, I'm gonna just let him kick on the floor and and you know wait it out, cause I can, and you know. That's what's gonna happen. Oh yeah, but they always give this this they they have this tenter tantrum and like every every certain crisis. So, but you know, we've learned from this behavior. Uh, we just don't let them there and let them scream it out and and crawl around the, around on the floor and everything like that, and then they'll be okay. So. We'll always be here. Exactly, but that was the thing. That kind of behavior, what they were talking about, was everything that you should have been looking for and asking for. So that's why I said that. I don't think there's nothing that could be done. And again, you like gummy bears and you don't have that recipe so you will pay for this food even if it goes up more because it's never gone down from my experience once they get you at a certain number it stops well no because I think a whole generation of kids are going to see prices like that and think it's normal People that are a little bit older, like in the 30s, stuff like that, to them, I would say even in the 40s, to them, this is crazy shit. Oh, I cuss. I gotta. I'm not gonna edit it. it it's far in the in the but you go. But they 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 know exactly what this is. Like this this is what I'm. Because they've seen both sides of it, and and they've seen it happen gradually, but they've seen both sides of that coin, and right now the coin is crazy, crazy, out of whack. Well, no, I'm just saying they've observed it when it wasn't like this, and now it is as far as prices and you know mortgages and and more money and more money uh and you know well no i mean that's the thing that would be a commitment to do something but i, I understand what you're saying and, and I, I i i don't know if i even blame people sometimes Oh my, I think, I can't remember what he used to tell me. No, because they, well, yeah, but think about it. If, if you, for instance, if you were them, right? Well, I, yes, I do believe it's a part of that. But this is the thing that's the worrying part. I think I was, we talked about this yesterday. Um, uh, yeah.
Yeah, but that's that. That's what would that would uh, would be the the sentiment, wouldn't it? Well, that's the thing. I think it's too late for you to start trying to like it, it's it's almost like pushing a boulder uphill, right? And you're like No, because you have to start all over again every 4 years. Like you're you're pushing up a you know, trying to push a boulder up a, a hill, right? And you know that 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 way that people get tired, uh, t you know, tired, and it falls a little bit, right? But you're you're bracing it again, and then you get your second win, you try again, and you know you lose your footing again. I don't, I don't know what could happen to where you prices would be normal, um, corruption would be gone. Like, what would that take? Yeah, but well, no, I'm talking about practical. Yeah, I'm not just dreaming. I'm saying like, what could be done that would stop them from doing it? Yeah, but yeah, but that's what I mean. When and, and you're right, but again, that's not how it's been running. <laughs> you see, no, that's my point. My point is, everything that, that where bad stuff is happening, there's been rules for it. So if the rules are not working, you see where I'm going with this? Like, that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, but that's what I mean, that staff. Okay, so first of all, uh, how do you get the railroad to do this or how do you get the gas people to do this right Engine engineers different people that are in that world right well no because I don't believe in doing it that way uh, my suggestion would be you should build your own whatever outside of that No, I understand. I'm not saying it's like an easy thing. I'm just spitballing here. I'm just telling you, you know, what I think. And most people are not going to get used to <laughs> like pulling potatoes up out the ground, which would be easy. But I don't, you, it would have to be so many people that decide to do that once, first of all. And then again, where are you going to get the stuff to keep going? Yeah, without um, harming people, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't believe in scenarios like that where that's an issue. Um, I, my, my parents always taught me about there's some people that have to have uh, 10 B&Ws in their yard while, uh, you know, a guy working minimum wage seven thousand twenty what of five cent those two things exist at the same time right but what is the motivating factor of someone being like oh I have to have 30 bathrooms in a mansion and then that's what I'm saying what do you do with that because there's some people that is there's never enough so and those are the people that are uh, 
I sell a million M&Ms in a day or whatever it is right just one product it's gonna be up to someone like that to come in and be like up oh, we're not doing this anymore yeah and they're not gonna do that is my point and I, and I don't mean to sound like you know but the kind of miracle you would need for this kind of government and what goes on it's it's Mm, yeah. Yeah, that's what they would say, though. But if you don't have any proof of what the numbers are, and they could tell you anything, you don't know about yield and anything like that. And I don't think that's on the uh, that's the most popular thing on people's minds in America of how uh, you, you you know it. it I don't 